And it is time now for the Great British Debate this hour. And I'm asking hydrogen versus electric cars. Which one is the future? This week, the Department for Transport accelerated its plans for the switch from petrol and diesel to electric. Now, they've proposed legally binding annual targets, which would see half of all new cars that are being sold by 2028 to be fully electric powered. Electric car sales jumped by 79% last month to 39,000 vehicles. That's more than in the whole of 2019. But today, a warning from the chairman of JCB. He says that Britain is significantly behind its European rivals in rolling out hydrogen power because ministers and officials are fixated on electric. So my great British debate this hour, I'm asking hydrogen versus electric cars, which is the future? Uh, I'm joined now by the editorial director of What Car magazine, Jim Holder. Jim, thank you so much for joining me. Right, firstly, this is a new target by the government for, uh, uh, for transport for half of new car sales to be fully electric by 2020. Is this actually achievable? Is it achievable? 2028, sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. So the target is 52% of all new cars being sold uh, to be electric uh, by 2028, as you say. Uh, and then the end target of 2030 uh, to be fully electric or hybrid, and then 2035, just electric. Uh, it is achievable, but it's achievable only if there's serious investment around the supporting infrastructure, particularly the charging network. Uh, and also investment in bringing down the price of these electric vehicles to make them affordable for a far wider proportion of society. Um, and then, of course, they have to improve as well in things like the range they offer for that money. So there's a lot to do, but the, the direction of travel at the moment is positive. Uh, there is very strong uptake. Uh, it is achievable so long as that momentum continues. Can you talk me through? So let's start with hydrogen because we've already we, we talk a lot about electric cars. We'll come to those. Uh, so hydrogen cars. First of all, what is it about? How do you fill one up? What, what goes into the engine? Is it a liquid? Is it a gas? And, and how would it actually work? So at the moment, uh, the majority of hydrogen cars that are sold, and, and they are in tiny numbers uh, in the UK, but there are some markets where they're, they're more popular, particularly Japan. Uh, you pump in the hydrogen uh, un under great pressure into a tank. That hydrogen is then used to generate electricity to propel the car. Uh, the process of pumping it in takes maybe five to ten minutes, so it's a lot closer to using a fuel pump, a petrol or a diesel fuel pump, rather than uh, the charging of an electric car, which has a battery, which can take anything really from 20 minutes to 20 hours, depending what kind of charger you're using. Uh, and then you would drive the car for upwards of 200 miles uh, before having to go back to another one of these refueling stations and, and going through that five, 10 minute process again. Right. So what's the rough capacity then? Because you said about 200 miles. What's the rough capacity of a hydrogen tank? Yeah, it's a good question and one I can't actually answer for you. But uh, you would be pumping in, as I say, just for a couple of minutes, the fuel uh, under the high, high pressure into that tank uh, at several atmospheres worth of pressure in order to get that kind of range. So, so in terms of the operation of the car, is it, a bit, is, it, is it sort of slightly, in a sense, slightly more reliable than an electric car in that the more you switch on and the more you use on the car, the, car, the charge can be quite, um, I think it can be quite, um, depending on how you drive the car, is hydrogen a bit more consistent in, in, in its use when it's in a car? Yeah, perhaps uh, uh, it is a little, but it would be fractional. So electric cars are particularly susceptible uh, to the weather. Cold weather will sap the range from the battery and how much it can, can hold. Uh, a hydrogen car is perhaps slightly less effective than that. But of course, the biggest variable on any car, uh, whatever it's fueled by, is how you drive it and how sensitive you are when you're driving it. So there are very fractional advantages uh, from that weather perspective with hydrogen. But beyond that, uh, it's like driving any other car. I've lived with one a hydrogen powered car for six months uh, and it's perfectly uh, achievable if the infrastructure is in place around you. Uh, I've lived with electric cars for years as well. Uh, and again, if you have what you need to make it run smoothly, they're exceptionally easy to live with. And, and if you were to look at the two, we'll come, we'll come to electric cars in a minute. But if you were to look at the two of them, which one do you actually see a, a, a more of a future for? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I think what we have to uh, recognise and accept is that the government really has dictated our future uh, to be around battery electric cars. Uh, they've set all these targets. Uh, the manufacturers are investing their R&D billions 
uh, into developing these vehicles to bring the price down, to bring the range up, as I said earlier. Uh, so the path is set. I think a lot of car makers are disappointed, perhaps, by the legislators around the world being quite so prescriptive. They would rather have been set an environmental target to hit uh, and then used their ingenuity to find a way in order to get there. What's actually happened is that the, the route to achieving the environmental goal has been prescribed, and that is battery electric vehicles. So I think you can say if the future you're looking 10 to 20 years out, then absolutely it is a battery electric vehicle. I think where hydrogen gets interesting is, first of all, in some slightly more niche uses, uh, where it's easy to store and produce the hydrogen, uh, the JCB example being one where there's a, a whole network set up around it in a very localized area. But of course, there is also the possibility that over 20 plus years, hydrogen could become more mainstream in its use. It has a lot of conveniences, uh, but we have been talking about hydrogen in that way for at least 20 years already. It's always been the next great fuel 20 years away, but not progressed uh, as quickly as perhaps people had hoped for a variety of reasons from the environmental cost of creating the hydrogen to the network of getting the hydrogen to the charging stations and the environmental cost of that uh, to the just financial cost of putting in a hydrogen fuel station today around a million pounds per fuel fueling forecourt. You know, that's an enormous infrastructure that would have to be created almost from scratch to support it us if we did make the full hydrogen switch. What about, OK, so what about electric cars then? Let's, uh, so talk me through electric cars, because you drive both. We've talked hydrogen cars. Let's go electric now. What about those? Yeah, so electric cars have uh, come on a long way. As I say, the car manufacturers have a, a d direction of travel from the, the various governments around the world and legislators around the world. So the rate of progress is enormous. There's a rough guide. You can say that for the same price, you're now getting twice as much range as you were five to seven years ago. And if that keeps moving, it will, of course, make the electric car a much more viable option for more people, uh, particularly if within that time they're able to produce new battery technology and bring the prices down as well. So you're seeing today between 10 and 15 percent of the new car market is electrified uh, and it's growing exponentially as a guide that just this March this year, uh, more electric cars were sold in the, in the whole of 2019. Uh, if you look to a market like Norway, where they really moved quickly to try and incentivize and prioritize electric cars, that market now for new car sales is around 85% of all vehicles being sold. Now, of course, Norway has advantages. It's quite oil rich to incentivize, and it's also quite rich in uh, natural resources, wind, water, uh, hydropower, to create that electricity to power those cars in a very clean way. But I do think the one benefit of the government having dictated where we're going uh, is that we are able to focus on one solution. You're not in a sort of VHS versus Betamax race, uh, perhaps at least for these 10 to 20 years. Everybody knows where the technology is going. There's quite a lot of clarity around what you can buy with confidence as a consumer. And of course, buying a new car particularly is an enormous investment. Jim, what would you say, because you've driven both types, what would you say is the biggest disadvantage of each of them? So firstly, hydrogen, what's the biggest disadvantage with that? Yeah, I think today the biggest disadvantage is absolutely being able to refuel the vehicles. Uh, there's probably a dozen, if that, fueling stations around the country. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I did live within five minutes of one of those fueling stations. But of course, when I was uh, 100 miles out, I would have to come back. Uh, home typically to be able to charge it. So I was fairly restricted in how I could use it. Uh, but of course, a lot of investment in the charging infrastructure could improve that. Uh, electric cars, battery electric cars, uh, the, the disadvantage really is the, the charging times and the charging infrastructure. It is improving uh, significantly uh, as more investment goes in there. And as I say, a high speed charger on a, a motorway can take you from almost an empty battery to an 80% full one in around 20 minutes, the time it takes you to pop into a service station and buy a coffee. Uh, and that's phenomenal. But of course, you know, there's this tension there as they sell more electric vehicles, they have to uh, put as many charges in to make sure that you're not left queuing or you're not left trying to find one that's working when you really need to put that power in there. Uh, so there's definitely a, a journey to be undertaken by both sides of the equation. Yeah. OK. Well, listen, I've got about 10 seconds. So uh, which one was your favourite, hydrogen or electric? I think for now we have to be realistic. Uh, the battery electric is, is the choice that we all have to go for in the next decade or so.
Mm, I thought you might say that, Jim. Thank you so much. Really good to talk to you. That's Jim Holder. He's the editorial director of uh, What Car magazine.